tell me this. I, first of all, when you started this, I thought this is really good for them. <laughs> How do we get past that as the church and as believers to, to, to get past the place where we think, I'm right, I'm good, I am Christ-like? Because a lot of people are sitting out there doing that. The church is looking. Are there some foundational priorities, some things that we can set forth? in our life that said this is a priority that will bring me to a place for where me. I'm for me, me for me, me. not yeah. for them you know I, I really I thought that this is good for them but this is for me to be more and to more 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 like Christ yeah well, and if we can possess the vision of becoming Christ like I mean forget about what my ministry title is forget about what you know what place I have you know who sees me do what but if I can just so Jesus was 30 years as a blue collar worker you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. He, he awakened the pleasure of God, didn't have any miracle, didn't have any crowd, didn't have any credentials, didn't mm -hmm. have any, any, anything. That, the people say, what are you? You're just like your Joseph son. Where'd you get this stuff? Mm -hmm. But internally, he was focused on the Father. He learned how to live, tracking always his radar, always what pleases the Father. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. That inner place of the heart, that secret place of the Most High. And so, and we know that. I know when I displease God. I mean, right? Of course. I mean, we don't have yeah. to go to school and know course, when we, course, you know, we feel that wash of, of yeah. shame and everything else. Right. But we can feel his pleasure. We can track his pleasure. Sometimes people say, what? I don't know what the will of God is. I say, find out what gives God pleasure and just stay there. Because if you give God pleasure, you are, you're in his will. You understand? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I want you to give us a... In the, in the very few minutes, I wish we had, I wish we had longer, but in, in the very few minutes that we have really remaining, I want you to tell me, and I want you to tell Mary, and I want you to tell this group, and everybody that's at home, how that we can really hone in to where our spirit is always seeking after to yeah. be Christ-like. Well, you, at first we have to know Him. I mean, we have to spend the time with the Lord. I mean, there's, there's no, you know, we, we kind of go to church on Sunday and get just enough of God to be immune to him you know what exactly. I mean we get inoculated with Sunday morning it's like right. then we don't have God to rest but right. to, to actually pursue the presence of God to actually spend our hearts given to pursuing the living presence of God there really is a God and he can come alongside anyone male female young or old if our hearts are right and knowing that I mean knowing that that we're you know we're not we're not we're not disqualified because of of anything that's natural to mankind as long as we can come out of our our lethargy and begin to seek hard after God mm. to prioritize the life of God mm. and and then to look at 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 the character of Christ now I when I see things that are in the world one of the things Jesus said and one of the things we focus on in the school is intercession yeah okay an imperfect world we got Christians are so mad at the world they're so angry at the things they're angry 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 at the things that are in the world but an imperfect world is job security for an intercessor. <laughs> yes. All right? That's good. I mean, we can never grow in Christ's likeness without a world just exactly like this one. Yes. We need this kind of, we yes. need enemies to, to, so we can love them. We need persecutors so we can pray for them. We yes. need, you understand? We need witchcraft so we can bless them to curse us. You understand? <laughs> That's I'm a not saying, wow. yeah. I mean, <laughs> when I get to heaven, I'm not going to do any more growing when I get to heaven, as far as I know. I think what we're doing now is producing something there that we're going to have forever. Okay? So all this is happening to produce greater Christ likeness, greater character. So I, I want to come out of my life. So when I see something that's wrong, I realize that what well, God has put me in the world to intercede for that. Yes. Okay? Now, Jesus said that one of the signs that because iniquity is abounding, the love of many grows cold. Okay? Mm. Or in King James says, many will be offended. Yes. All right? So we have, we have a lot of Christians that are offendable. What I want to possess. And we go on this in this in the school, but what I'm seeking to possess is the unoffendable heart oh. of Christ. What does that mean? That means that when he's when you're wounded, it doesn't morph or degrade oh. into oh. anger, into bitterness. Oh. Bitterness is unfulfilled revenge. Oh. Okay? Oh. So when I get hit, and we will get hurt. I mean, let's face it. Jesus said stumbling blocks are inevitable. In fact, he said they're necessary. There's something about this battleground that we're in. Peter said, as the, uh, he said, as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same purpose. All right? There's something that, that I, I'm going to get hurt. 
If I'm speaking the truth, if I'm going to live godly in Christ, I'm going to get hurt. Yeah. Let's get over trying to pretend it's not going to happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, so, but Christ, every one of those, what would seem like would be the kind of things that a man would harden his heart or withdraw. Jesus allows the adversity to perfect his love. Yes. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. On the cross, you think about when he's on the cross, the profound life that's, that's exemplified there. He can't, you know, they're, they're mocking him. His friends, his best friends have, have not prayed for him. Uh, three times he gets up in the garden, three times. He's always praying to the Father, but three times he leaves his prayer with the Father to say to his brothers, pray with me. Mom. You know, there's a time when you need your friends to be there with you, yes. you know? Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You need God, you need God to be in your friends. You need God to be in the eyes of your friend and a shoulder, a hand on the shoulder. You understand? And, and, and they, they're not there for him. Mm. They, they're not there. The, the justice system fails him. How many of you ever had the justice system fail you, yeah. you know? The justice system fails him. He's there on that cross. Oh, God. And what's he do? He allows love to reach its highest place. Listen. He prays the mercy prayer. Listen. He prays the mercy prayer. He prays, Father, forgive them. Yes. They didn't know what they were doing. I mean, they knew it. Pilate knew that they delivered him up because of envy. But love covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> he's praying the mercy prayer. He, he looks like a failure, but he's letting love rise to the height of its perfect sacrifice. And, and while he's praying that mercy prayer, the spiritual horizon around Jerusalem is, being, is filling up with archangels and, and, and holy warring angels. The veil is rent in two. Hey. You understand? Yeah. And then, and out of the graves come the dead. But see, all he's doing is he's giving God pleasure by letting love be perfected. Wow. You see what I'm saying? And by allowing love to be perfected, he awakens the pleasure of God. He brings the power of God into society. Mm. You see? And so, and so that's the focus, you know. That's the focus.